Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Cabin Fever Crochet with me, Helene. Thanks for being here as always. I hope you have a little time because I have lots of fun things to show you. So, have you missed me? <laughs> I've missed being here. For me, it's been a few weeks. I, I had filmed prior to, and so I had a couple videos ready to go, which was good because I got sick really, really sick. I mean, I haven't been knocked down like that in probably 20 years. But I'm back, and this past week I've been getting out a little bit, rebuilding my strength, energy, and endurance one <laughs> step at a time. And yesterday was such a beautiful, sunny, 45-degree winter day, so I took myself into the city and I had errands and things to do and I was just right there and so close I thought might as well just make my rounds and go to all the yarn stores and see what's new for the season because I've been a Jones and to look. <laughs> so I went to the different stores and one I stayed longer and some than others and you'll see why in the video but uh, Boy, oh boy, Michaels and Hobby Lobby, you know, for the mainstream uh, chain type stores really seem to have it going on and all ready together for spring with displays and there are some empty racks and shelving so they'll probably be getting more in but that was really exciting to see in February, that was great. Joanne, on the other hand, seems like they are still getting it together, and you will see why. And um, then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you the few things I got. And I actually have some new patterns and tutorials that I'm working on. Got started on those, you know, up my sleeve once I could finally get my foggy head around crocheting and concentrating again. So in the meantime, let's get started on this fun little tour. Well, I was so excited when I headed into Joanne to see if they had anything new yet for the season, and apparently they're still working on it, because when I went down the yarn aisles, most of them had big empty shelving spaces like this, just the basics that you see or can get at pretty much any chain store. Nothing new or exciting. And all the really interesting, unique yarns, the lighter weight DK, all the Premier Every Day, which I enjoy, were gone. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they bring in. And I hope they are working on reorganizing as well, because when I turn the corner to look at the cake yarn, and said to myself, whoa, what a disorganized mess, the way all those cakes are tossed in there every which away. But I did find the one thing I went in for and needed, so I grabbed it, and then onward to Michael's, and right when I walked in, I saw this very interesting new yarn. And you know I like the naturals, and I like cotton, a good cotton. And this is their creme cotton. It's a number four weight, and I noticed on the solids you get a little bit more yardage, 432 yards in a 7-ounce ball, 87 cotton, 13 nylon, number four weight. And now we have some self-striping yarns, 394 yards. So you can see the regular price is $9.99. This is Michael's in-house brand Loops and Threads. And all of the Loops and Threads was on sale today for 40% off. So it was $5.99. And this particular colorway is called Sunrise. And I think they are all lovely. You know, really getting your spring on here. And as far as the texture and how the, it's spun, um, or plied, if you will, I guess. It appeared to be a chain net type of construction. It's very interesting. has a soft texture, not as soft as combed cotton and so forth, but softer than your dishcloth, and kind of somewhere in between. I think that would be a real 
great alternative if you like making houseware items but don't enjoy the traditional dishcloth cotton. And now what I was really thrilled to find was the Karen Cotton Cakes in February. I couldn't believe it. This is the first year that I've seen it before April. And at first glance, I thought, oh, these are a lot of repeats from previous years with some new ones, but they are actually all new except for some of the solids. And now this one is called Fruit Tropics. I first I thought it was the, I think the boho flowers or something like that. And you know, this is, these are the big cakes now, 8.8 .8 ounces and it's 60 cotton, 40 acrylic with a semi-string-like dishcloth texture that's more or less pronounced depending on the type of stitch you use. Uh, oh, and this is a new color. I'm going to tell you in the solids, there's that frosted pink. There's that really pretty mint green to the left. And this is mint refreshers, so you have more solids this year, some new ones. You have the self-striping, and you can really mix and match. And a lot of the solids this year, now that aqua on the left, that one uh, was available last year as well. But you can still mix and match and they work back to colors from previous years as well. And it seems like a lot of similar colors, but put together in different ways with a couple of new ones. And they have a white white, an optic white this year, which they haven't had. They've had more of like the cream and off-white in previous years. And that's another new one too. So I was really, really excited to see that. And this yarn recommends an H or a five millimeter hook. And I've gone down where I'm working the brim of the hat and there are projects where you can go all the way up to a J. And aside from the sometimes too many knots per cake, I have a lot of fun with this yarn. Now I've just made mostly summer hats and bags so far. However, I'm working on some new ideas and if you have any great ones for it, please comment below. I just think they came out with a really nice color palette and variety of tones from the neutrals to the mid-tones and blues and the brights and everything in between. And these, as with previous years, they're not shiny, they're matte, they're a little bit muted in that they give a bit of a stonewash appearance, with maybe the exception of a couple solids and the whites. So I just want to show you a little bit more of what the store has without showing you every single yarn. But we have another rack, that was the Bernat baby velvet and they got in all kinds of new spring colors and this is a new one I haven't seen I think it's a new yarn the baby Marley 100% polyester and a big 10.5 ounce skein number five bulky weight and the colors are very pretty and it was uh, pretty soft I, I think the colors are lovely I'm just not a real polyester fan Maybe if there's a little bit blended, and I'll make an exception, but as a whole, 100% poly, just not my thing. But I can see that worked up into some really um, pretty items. And this, if you like the Lion brand, feels like butter, 9.7 ounces. I think this is also polyester, but very pretty colors if you're doing larger projects like blankets. And here's Cozy Baby. I haven't seen this one before. A number three light, as you can see, and isn't as thin as, say, Mandela number three, and definitely much softer. Very squishy. Spun pretty tightly, but not so tight where you get that coarseness. It seems like it's going to work up well, wear well. It's not going to split, pill, fray very easily. Super squishy beautiful colors, that one being my favorite. It is 70% acrylic, 30 polyamide, and yes, I'd make an exception for that one. You get a whopping 7 ounces and 557 yards. And I do believe the Cozy Baby along with Creme Cotton and Cotton Colors are going on my wish list. Now here is a huge pile of the Mandela Tweed, such, such pretty colors. It's soft, it's pretty soft, soft enough, and the color palettes are gorgeous. 
Um, I This one, White Elephant, I think is real fun, I guess, because it has a little bit of everything in it. And as you can see, you get quite a bit of yardage for a number four weight. Um, however, when I picked up the strand, I mean, I am barely touching that. And you can just see how the yarn instantly separates. I think that would kind of drive me nuts. Great price for it, though. I do like how well organized and displayed these cakes are. And a look at this crazy stuff. I have no idea what one would do with that. More clearance over here. Heat wave. That came and went. Now here's definitely a cold weather one, but kind of caught my eye because of the difference, the colors. 532 yards. That is quite a bit. Yeah, I had to do a double check on that. Mm -hmm. Made in China. Uh, 30 poly, 29 nylon, 25 acrylic, 7 wool. A number 5 bulky recommended. I think that was a 6 or 6.5 six millimeter. Interesting way that it, it's plied. This is the in-house brand. I think it's called Craft Yarn. And um, too coarse, way too coarse for my taste. And it's a real basic yarn. You get quite a bit of it. And really beautiful colors. These neutrals caught my eye right there. The second one up. And then these top three. Especially, I mean, these are just all so beautiful. But this yarn, I can tell, would be very irritating for my sensitive skin anyway. And we have a couple more aisles down here have a lot of kind of basics to the right is the dishcloth cotton to the left we have the impeccable yarn another i believe that is yes the loops and threads the in-house brand and then further up a little bit you have coming up on it just a small amount of the lion brand heartland and hardly any compared to what michael's used to carry and here is uh, the Joy DK, which to me is the same as the Luna yarn, and I think which is by Premier number three light, and that it is recommends an H hook. I think you can easily go down a hook or two, and maybe even up one. Two hundred and seventy-three yards. It's an anti-pilling. It almost feels like it has a bit of nylon in it because it has that real smooth, silky feel but it does not. And it has a real nice light sheen, beautiful color palette. I'm not exactly sure, but if memory serves me, I think they might have had even more colors online. But if you have that Luna yarn and you're looking for other colors, they would certainly work well together. And here's the Red Heart Soft and the Red Heart Soft Essentials, which is the same yarn, just a bulkier version. Uh, I'd say more like a chunky weight. That's how it works up to me. I have worked with it before. But so many pretty colors that you, again, you know, I love that mix and matching, coordinating, contrasting. You can have a lot of fun with that. Sorry about the camera there. Then you've got more of your basics, the Karen Simply Soft, some Bernat Blanket. There's a really good assortment here. Another Loops and Threads, Kai Yarn. This is a number three, 308 yards, and it's a very pretty marled and self-striping yarn. I thought it's 100% acrylic. It recommends an eye hook. Um, I think that you, you can go down to a G, G+, plus, just depending on your type of project. So there's a really good range there. has a nice smooth hand. does not seem like it would split, but it's not spun tightly but not real loose, but enough to where I think you can get that loft. And as you could see, and if you want to rewind, uh, I'm holding the yarn up next to each other, each ball, so you can see the variation within each skein on how the yarn plays out. And they have some of the Premier Cotton Fair. It's a number two light. I, I like this yarn. 52 cotton, 48 acrylic, 317 yards. It can be a little splitty, 
but not overly so and it works up so nicely it's soft it's a great blend maintains its shape and it works well well even doubling up and pairing with something like the Patton's Grace which is a hundred percent mercerized cotton and it's less string like and more soft than your typical mercerized type of cottons, which mercerization goes through a process that adds sheen, strength, and resiliency, makes it kind of more string-like, and is really great for certain open weave garments and bags and hats and things. And there I showed you a rack of some of their larger books. And then we've got sock yarn on the left, and then your usual all three of the, the Karen Big Cakes, the original Karen Cakes, and then the Chunky Cakes. So many pretty colors, but again, ah, oh, a little too coarse for my delicate sensibilities. And when I turn the corner on this end cap here, to my surprise, it's empty. And from the shelf edging there on the price and the looks of it, they are bringing in the Lion Brand Summer Nights in the big skeins. And now I'm going up the last aisle where you have your, your basic, the Red Heart Super Saver, the in-house equivalent. And then the, another Loops and Threads, their Charisma Yarn. It calls for an L hook. I think that's pretty good. It's... 100% acrylic. It is a bulky weight. I've used this several times. It works up quite nicely and they have such a lovely palette and array of colors from the self-striping and a lot of solids and some tweeds too. And this is the Barcelona yarn again loops and threads and it is again a chunky to light bulky weight. 328 yards for seven ounces. I've used this quite a bit too and again kind of with the Kai yarn that I showed you in the lighter yarn this also is marled and self-striping but in a chunkier. Here's a sock yarn I haven't worked with or used. Uh, it's 85 percent acrylic the rest nylon number one super fine 678 yards it's very soft and smooth and would make a great alternative for those who are real sensitive to wools and they have a lot of really pretty colors as well and just a really nice hand to it and the way that it's spun feels like it would work up quite well and on this back wall, just look like they have, there's some Isaac Mizrahi clearance yarn and then uh, maybe some overstock of the basics. And we move along to all our tools, knitting, crocheting, and some super jumbo needles and hooks that you could even use as a weapon if you had to, my goodness. I don't even know how I, I could like, manipulate those. Maybe for that crazy yarn <laughs> would be the purpose. Some more books back here, knitting and crochet. And then on the rack next to it, you have the like the smaller booklets, if you will. I mean, they're still full size, but they have just X amount number of patterns within. On this rack behind me, as you can see from the scale of my hand, that's what I would call more of a booklet. I think these are just perfect for travel because there's a little something for everybody here, from stitch books to novelty items, children, pets, housewares, afghans. I mean, you name it, it's there. And here we are inside Hobby Lobby already. And you know, I had meant to take pics of the outside store signs for when we continued on our yarn tour journey. I forgot. Oh well, we're here. And in this store, I'm going to show you just the new yarns and revisit a couple of others. Now this is one of my favorite go-tos again for the mercerized type cotton projects. This is Sinfonia by Omega Yarns. It's made in Mexico. This is a sport weight, 219 yards. Absolutely love it. I do combine it with other yarns, again, like the Premier Cotton Fair that I showed you at um, Michael's. And this just has such a nice hand to it. It's calling for an e-hook, but I usually go up a hook size or two, except when I'm doing brims but it does work really well with other lighter weight yarns, whether it be cotton, acrylic, 
um, bamboo or what have you. And a little while back they came out with the self-striping and then that one that's kind of spotted with the shorter strands of color mixed with the white. Sadly, Hobby Lobby only carries six colors now, but there are 65 available, and I'll leave the links below where you can check them out if you like. This one, Fresh Haven, I have in the pink, and I have that real pretty green next to it, 100% Tencel, which is, again, is a plant fiber pulp, and it very cool to the touch. It's silky. It is so soft, drapey, puddly, squishy, beautiful. 12 colors all together, all very nice. Eight solids and four light marled that they're calling twists in those four colors there that work back to the coordinating solids. <laughs> I tell you, I could pet this yarn all day. It sure will make wonderful feeling warm weather garments, and I just love the name. Here's one that I have been looking at for a while, haven't purchased. The Rainbow Rhapsody Gabara Daisy is the one that really caught my eye. And I think this might be a new color this year, or at least one that I just noticed. 60 cotton, 40 acrylic. Wow, you know, for 7 ounces, 918 yards. I think it is, what was it, number one, super fine. And even though I'm drawn to these whenever I'm here and like to touch and squish because they're just so pretty and soft, I do love my Red Heart It's a Wrap Rainbow and have a fair amount already. This I haven't seen before. And if this is new, I don't know. I, it, I think it's supposed to maybe resemble Angora. It does have that look and feel. So soft. Super squishy. It is 70 acrylic, 30 polyamide. It says a number three light, but look, you get 540 yards for three and a half ounce. So I would definitely categorize that much lighter. Although because of the fluffiness, it, it could uh, loft up a lot when working with it. Spinesse. This is called teal. It just looks like a real true blue to me. But it's pretty, and it's soft. 75 viscose, again, plant fiber type pulpish thing, and 25 polyester. It's a very lightweight number three, nicely spun, smooth, soft, and squishy, although only eight and not very inspiring colors to me other than this blue one. Glint of Glam. I've come back and looked at it because it's so nice and again cool to the touch because of that bamboo and cotton. 295 yards in this one, so it is again in the lighter weight category. Very soft, even the 3% Lurex in there that gives it the sparkle is not scratchy, but if you could see that was super splitty. Now this mimosa yarn that Hobby Lobby has carried for some time, I'm showing you because I often combined the two, like with that Symphonia mercerized cotton when I need, uh, say, a spring hat that has a wider brim, I need a little tighter, more structure, or a little bit thicker. And they work really well together, and the mimosa is so pretty with the rayon and cotton blend. It's like a light number two. has a lovely sheen that's spun with the base yarn, but the only thing is it drives me crazy because it twists and tangles on itself constantly. And I have used it on its own for a lighter weight summer scarf. There are not a lot of colors, but they all are very pretty. All right, so moving on, I just had to show you the button rack at Hobby Lobby. They have so many to choose from, from basics and novelties. They have plain ones here, the cute little daisies, sparkly, plastic, metal, rhinestone type, these wood buttons, carved buttons, you name it. Those in big enamel buttons I've used quite a bit for heavier bulky weight in the winter time. They really are nice, not too heavy, and make a great statement piece. And I'll show you some of the ones that I already have at home. And um, then more of the, the plastics. And then there you've got the green daisies. Here's some more enamels. 
and the enameled buttons they don't all keep together but rather in the color categories and then there are some more of the pink and yellow daisies I've used those both for child items and then also for towel toppers too they're just very fun and then those heart shaped ones those are enameled as well so down here we have some novelty and then it goes into mostly metal buttons these I just thought are really interesting, very artsy, as well as even the more so the heart buttons. And there are some plastic that look like metal and mixed within, so you really have to know. Now those I just zoomed in on, I, I used those in my beaded bracelets, and I'll leave the link below for that tutorial, crochet tutorial. And those on the left, those two with the faux pearls, those I've used a lot in chunkier weight yarns that have some sparkle in them. These are super cute that look like clay, and they're just all different ones down there. These remind me of Delftware from Holland. I really like that look, that Delft blue a lot. And then, yeah, going back down now, you know, you've got monkeys and owls and all kinds of critters, butterflies, dragonflies, flowers. I've used the butterflies and the flowers in a variety of uh, children's items before. And then packets of wood buttons down there. And over here, we have a lot of the silver tone with iridescent and some really remind me of Art Deco and then also from the 50s and 60s. Love those owls. Haven't gotten them yet. They've been on my wish list though. And they're just so unique and pretty and some more vintage and classic and others more of an artsy modern twist to them. You can see some that are, are more iridescent than others. And uh, on this side, next to it, we have a mix of metal and plastic. And these on the right, that peridot green, I'm turning the camera to the side so you can see how much dimension and layers that a lot of these have. They're just so, all so beautiful and in such a variety of colors. And going all the way up to the top, you can just see the texture and the layers with uh, those on the left, their second one in, how sparkly they are and mixing warm and cool tones, which I love. I also like a lot of the filigree work that's in many of them. But I don't want to swing back over because what, what are these? Are they bows? No, they're butterflies. And I think just so super special and all just so inspiring, really. Okay, now to see what new goodies I got. Oh, you know, I could go hog wild if I let myself. Oh, I have so much yarn, and I just don't want to be a collector of it, even though I love yarn, and I could, and I have. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so Joanne, yes, I went and d dove into those cakes of yarn gently. Fortunately, the one I was looking for was pretty close on top. So uh, all I did there, nothing too terribly exciting, but I picked up the shawl and a cake. Much prefer it in the cake form. Saves me from having to wind it. This is by Lion Brand, as you probably know. 5.3 ounces, 481 yards. And um, this is going to be for an upcoming project. And... The stitches are a little bit harder to see working with it, so I'll probably work it up first so I can show it to you and then do the tutorial on something else. I already have one, but I'm not quite sure, depending on how they don't want the sizing to go, if one's going to be enough. So I got another just to be sure, and then what's left I'll make hats or a wool scarf or something. But this is in the beautiful colorway called Wind Chimes, which is, um, you know, a really nice gradient of all blues. And I, I like that because most of them have multiple color changes. So this was real nice to see. Next up, 
on my wrap was Michael's. Can you guess? Can you? I bet some of you who've got to know me know what I got. I didn't get much, minimal, and I got three of the same cotton cakes. <laughs> really, I might have to go back and get two more. I'd like to go back and get the mauve in that purpley one because um, I know a lot of people would like that. And I really wasn't sure how much, you know, I know I have a lot in these tones at home, but I don't have this one. <laughs> Look at that. That looks like a flower already. Yeah, I've used up a lot of these last summer. It's looking a little bit washed out because I'm losing daylight for dark here. It's not as, as saturated, but you, you got an idea in the store anyway. So this is Fruit Tropics. Yummy, yummy. Does it make you like kind of just want a bowl of, of sherbet or gelato or something? So I'm not going to go over all the specs because I already did that in the store. But what I like about this is because it has the, um, the mint and the green and the colors that they carry in the solids. So I already have some ideas for different types of hats I want to do this year in it. So I only got the three, but yeah, I, I do want those other two. And I had to get the pink, frosted pink, which really has, here I'll pull back, I think that's a little better, not, not to go with this, but this, it's called frosted pink, but it really has peachy undertones to it. I'm sorry, I'm starting to get tired and fade a little bit. So pardon me from stumbling over my words and thoughts. But anyway, um, I'll keep going before I really do lose my voice again. I, I like this so much. It's going to be great for the hats. And I'm thinking, you know, I could do the self-striping and... The body of the hat and maybe a solid brim and then pipe the edge of it and the self striping or vice versa I could do a solid the band part with the striping and then pipe it again or do uh, maybe a flower in this on a solid there's so many different combinations that you can do with it Ugh, I am just like challenged okay there's really all not that much to show in these anyway. And then because I already have the aqua at home as mentioned, after I went to Hobby Lobby, put everything in my car, I went back to Michael's and I got the mint. The aqua and the green solids would go together. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. Oh, and hey, I pulled out my little hat, which I'm going to revise and make it even better for this season and um, this is one I made oh, a couple few years ago but I wanted to bring it out and show it to you as an example but I made it to where the edges are more curved and a little bit longer brim and so I have some things to work out on it look I even did the little little ponytail port for it and I made some um, last year and year before, and I put some applique and flowers on them and some larger brimmed hats too, but I will save that for another video and just do one with maybe a tour of the hats that I've made in previous years. Would that be fun for you? Would you enjoy that? Okay, so last up was Hobby Lobby. And I bought two yarns and two sets of buttons. That's it. Okay, um, more of the Sinfonia. <laughs> Lo and behold, I have these, this coral. Is it? They're, they're calling it Rosa, R-O-S-A, Rosa. But I've already used this before, and I will again, so I'm fine with having a couple. And then I got this pretty turquoise color and the actual name for it looks like it is in Spanish 
And even though, you know, I meant to say in the body of the video when I was showing this to you that um, 219 yards, I would more consider towards the worsted weight. However, because it's mercerized and the construction is so tight that um, it does make this a thinner yarn. So, and I would agree with the sport weight label on this. It, it does work up. But it is, it's very smooth and it is softer than some mercerized. Oh, uh, if you've ever used the Lion Brand 24-7, which I think I have pretty much all of their colors on that, it is a little bit softer than that and, and it is lighter. And so that's why I can use this one to double up if I, I want to make a more structured type of hat. And so what I did was I brought out a couple of Lion Brand, their Summer Nights yarn that I picked up last year. You can there, oh, there you can see the metallic in it. It is really, it's a super fine. Ah, let me come over here. I'm sorry for the glare. Hang on, I'm going to try to adjust. I don't know if that's any better or not, but we're just going to have to go with it. You can see the sparkle pretty well, and it is, it's, it's very thin, and it's real soft. It's 82 acrylic, 18 poly. See? I told you I'd make exceptions on that poly. <laughs> the metallic is, is not scratchy at all, and I really like that. So I brought that out, and I thought, well, this has pink and coral and kind of a creamy white to it, and I think these two would certainly work together well. So I'm excited to try that because sometimes pairing this with that, um, oh, I can't, I think the mimosa yarn that I showed you at Hobby Lobby, which I'm going to pull out. Sometimes that, even though it's a number two fine, the mimosa combined with the sport weight, it can be maybe a little bit thick. So I'm going to give that a go. <clears throat> And then on this, I don't know, you know, these two just might work. This is definitely more blue turquoise, but this has shades of blue and green. And I'm kind of thinking that this might be interesting. I might try it. Hey, if I don't like it, I can just, you know, pull it out and try something else. But here, here is that mimosa yarn. I have this beautiful, they're calling it turquoise to me, it's leaning a little bit green. It's showing up real true to color, more going into the jade family. But it does work with blues quite well. And I do have the white in the symphonia. I mean the symphonia. That's this one. In the mimosa. Mimosa. Not a fun word to say. Mimosa. And just to remind you again, 100% mercerized cotton. And this is a blend of cotton and rayon. 62-38%. This is the one that it said drives me nuts because it twists and curls constantly as I'm working up with it, no matter what I do. But I really like the result very much. It does have a little stringish like a feel and a, a feel and I think it's because of that kind of shiny type yarn that's spun around the base yarn. Oh there you could kind of see that that I showed you in the store. But I just every so often I just smooth it out because of the end result and, and I really like it. And it's a breathable lightweight summer yarn and I love mixing it and can do a lot of things. Oh and it comes in a really pretty vibrant hot pink if you like that too. All right so <clears throat> the buttons that I got put all this stuff back in just two. I just picked up to put in the center of flowers these carved wood there we go wood flower buttons for some of the more earthy natural summer hats. And then my fun little ones, I used them all up and these will go. I wanna make some child hats this year, some for boys and some for girls because I got asked a lot. You know, they go through such a 
range of sizes that, at least with hats, especially if I can figure a way, to, like I did last year, to do cinch ties, then, then they will fit a range. So that's kind of what I'm going for. But hey, kids need little sun hats too. So these will be fun, plastic, um, even machine washable. Although I always recommend any of the handmade items to hand wash, but if it happens to get tossed in there, then it's not going to kill it. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the tours and had as much fun as I did, or at least half as much anyway. All right, my friends, take care. I will see you again soon. And if you would, please like, subscribe, share, and help my channel grow. All right, thanks as always, and until next time, cheers.